What is going on everybody? Welcome to the seventh Python for finance using Quantopian and Zipline tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about a couple of things, but first it's going to be these adding a stop loss to our program. So like I was saying before, a stop loss is a way for us to cut our losses. It's generally used because it's an, if, if we're thinking price is going to go up and we make a buy, but the market is telling us, nope, that was a bad decision and the price is falling. We want to have at least at some point a way for us to cut our losses here. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about here. You don't want to set a stop loss that's like too low, otherwise it's going to be triggered. You have to account for market volatility. Uh, but a stop loss maybe somewhere can be a good idea. Just like a, a limit buy somewhere can be a good idea. You can get pretty absurd with your limit buys, but um, it makes sense to use them. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's what we're going to be covering here is stop loss and adding that to our program to see if we do any better. Uh, now, just for the record, um, when you're writing your program here, okay, and you run a backtest, as long as you run a full backtest, if you run this build algorithm, it won't save it. But if you run a full backtest, you can click on this backtest button here, and you can see the backtests that you've run. So this was our first backtest. This was without sales, if you recall. Uh, but we can click on that and reference an old backtest that we ran a while ago. So this was without um, selling anything. Uh, and we did a little worse than we did selling things. So there's that. And also we improved our sharp ratio, which is a good thing, by selling things. Um, and if for whatever reason you want to reference the code that was used for the specific backtest, what you would do is you click this button here and you can go view code. And this is the code that you wrote that generated this backtest. So anyway, you can go to backtest and then uh, go back to all backtests here. And this was the one that we just run, ran in the previous video. And this gave us 3.94. And this was with actually selling stocks. And you can actually see the sales that occurred here. Uh, and uh, then up here, you can see that, it, like I was saying, the sharp did improve. But anyways, so going back to our algorithm, so you can write, you can keep updating the same script that you've been working on. You can always reference your old scripts because they save them. I don't know if they have a limit, but it seems like they don't, <laughs> at least to me. So anyway, let's add the stop loss now. And to do that, you just add it in the order. And it's like this for any order. So you can add it when you do order target percent. You can add it into order. You can do order target and so on. Basically, any order type you can add there. And again, if you don't know about the order types, you can always go to that the documentation here and look on this side here. And there's ordering, right? So right on the left. And to get to the documentation, again, it's help help in API docs, you get here, here's ordering, and then wouldn't you know, here's all the options for ordering. You've got just tons of options, so uh, keep it in mind. But anyway, to do a stop order, you'd use style, and here's a limit order, but here's a, an example of a stop order. So style, stop order, and then you put the price of whatever that stop order you want it to be. So coming over here, we place our order for the stock, the share amount, and then we add a quarg. So style equals, and it's already got it there for us. So stop order. So we'll say we want it to be a stop order. And then we set the price that we want the stop order to be. Well, this is going to be kind of dynamic, right? Because depending on what kind of stock we're investing in, we're not going to know the price in advance. I mean, you could be like, if any stock gets below $10, I don't want it anymore. Uh, so you could do something like that, but that's probably uh, not very practical for the most of you. So the way that we can do that is we need to calculate dynamically the stock stop price. So we're going to just do stop underscore price, and that's going to be equal to the stock price um, minus the, basically we want to minus like a half a percent, let's say. So we're going to say minus the stock underscore price times 0 0.005. And that will be a half a percent. So the current price now minus a half a percent of the value. That's what we want our stop price to be. Okay. So we can just basically do that. And that's that. Uh, if we do do shorts, so you can, you can short companies uh, with Quantopian. We'll talk about that later. But you can do that. And again, with stop price, you can have a stop price for shorting too. So your stop price for a short might, instead of be minus, it would be like a plus. Okay, so if you're thinking the stock's going to go down, but it goes up more than half a percent, you're, you want out. So uh, with that, that should be it. So let's go ahead and run a full back test and see how we do. 
Now, uh, while we're waiting, um, we'll just talk briefly about some of these different meanings. So these different values, um, a lot of times people think of a backtest and they really only value the backtest based on one number, or one metric, and that's the total returns. So a lot of people just simply only care about what is this number, right? So what was the return? And that's all they care about when really there's a lot more that goes into an algorithm than how much money did it make? Because a lot of times you've got all kinds of questions. First of all, did were they using what's called leverage? And leverage is where you take on more money than you have. So you're basically, someone is lending you money. So this means you might make um, exponentially more money or it might mean that you'll make exponentially less money as leverage is usually in the terms of one to one which is no leverage one to two which is le a lot like you're taking on double the amount of money that you have and so on so you've you've got leverage in that sense uh, so it's generally like a multiple of loss or a multiple of gain so there's stuff like that but then we have these metrics here like alpha beta sharp alpha is basically your your program's irrespective of the market, what your gains, I guess it's how much of your gains were made irrespective of the market, okay? So that's the idea there. Beta is basically how much of your gains were made respective of the market. Um, sharp is how much risk you took on in, uh, in respect to how much you actually made uh, and so on. So, and then drawdown, this is another important one. Volatility is pretty important. You just wanna get that number low. But max drawdown is another one that's important. And this is basically from the highest high to the to the subsequent lowest low. So it's not so much like, you know, this was the highest and, you know, this was the lowest. It's mostly like it's, it's from the highest trough to the lowest subsequent fall. So in any one kind of cycle, how much did you lose in percentage form? 6.7% is good enough, but this was only a year of data. So that's not really that useful. So... Um, you know, people like to do just returns only, but you have to keep in mind that some people like to invest for uh, maybe a steady income. So there are people that really like the idea of high risk, high yield. So high risk, high yield strategies, people just care about the percentage return. They just like want to focus on that. But some people actually just want a steady income and they actually want to smooth out the fluctuations of the overall, you know, S&P 500 market. Uh, so you've got people like that and, and Quantopian, at least to me, appears to be mostly interested in, uh, in a low beta. So for Quantopian, for example, they're looking for anything between negative 0.3% or negative 0.3 rather and positive 0.3 for the beta. So they want something that's pretty irrespective of market movements. They want... And that's the only thing that they're actually filtering for. So if you're not between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3, they will throw you out. But if you are, it doesn't matter what any of these other things are besides total returns. They want you to make money. Uh, but like they don't really care so much. I mean, they care, but they don't care so much about drawdown and all this kind of stuff. They just want a low beta. That's like their number one thing that they're looking for, right? Uh, but as an investor, you should care too about thing all of these metrics because they all matter pretty importantly because let's say you've got really high returns but you've got a max drawdown of like 50 percent so that means at one point in one fluctuation you lost half of your value so the chances of you at some point losing more than half are pretty darn high so you want to keep drawdown as low as possible and then the sharp ratio is another really important one Basically, you want to for sure be above one. I wouldn't want to trade anything live that had a sharp ratio less than one. So obviously, this is not something I would trade. And then two is pretty good. And anything like three and above is just great. <laughs> okay, so if you get a three or above sharp, you're doing you're doing very well. Alpha and beta, I personally don't really care. I I don't see any problem with a high beta. Uh, but again, it depends on who you're, who you're asking. So Quantopian wants something that's basically not that involved. They want very low market exposure. So they want a low beta, but I wouldn't really worry that much about it. But alpha is pretty important, right? You want to have a strategy that performs well without just simply, you know, like, cause if you're, if you're, if you've got a strategy and a strategy adds risk, okay. As opposed to just holding things in the market. So if, you're, if your beta is basically one and your alpha is pretty much nothing, then 
you would have been way better off just buying and holding, let's say, the S&P 500 Spider Index Fund, right? That would have been way smarter. So that's kind of why we want to use all these other metrics because they bring a lot more to the table than just a simple, you know, total returns. Uh, they help us kind of evaluate how much risk are we taking in, you know? So in the past, a, a lot of like uh, quant traders for institutions even were judged, you know, pretty much mainly based on their total returns. If you were a performer, they gave you more money. But nowadays, actually, they, there's a lot of risk analysis that goes into every single trader because they don't want to blow up because blowing up is actually a lot more co common than we would think. Or even like it, it's like one of those things, it's like the gambler's fallacy or something. It's just it. Of course, it makes total sense that gambling doesn't make any sense or or that uh, if you flip a coin. 10 times and you have eight heads, people, despite knowing statistics, think a tails is just really likely to occur for some reason. You know, it just, it's one of those things that just doesn't make sense to us. So, so, um, so we use stuff like this to kind of help us get away from our own biases pretty much. So anyways, we'll probably talk a little bit more on these. So far, we don't really have the greatest strategy yet. Uh, we haven't really talked too much about, um, all the things that Quantopian can do for us. So there's a lot more involved than what we've got, but these are just, you know, pretty basic strategies to start. But anyway, uh, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about maybe searching for a strategy with, with beta. So for example, here with Quantopian, the question is, you know, they want between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. How do we get a strategy in that number, in that range, so we can, in theory, enter the contest? Well, we need a strategy that's going to do both buy and short because with shorting, shorting is going to allow us to oppose the market directly. So that will help us keep a low beta. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial because so far we haven't done any shorting, but we'll be talking about that uh, in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And until next time.